Save time, save water the Belverde way with a beautiful artificial grass lawn available exclusively at Sam's Club, in-store and online. Artificial grass installation is really easy to do. Simple forms and tips are available online at belverde.com. Belverde Artificial Turf is made in Dalton, Georgia, right here in the USA, exclusively for Sam's Club members. To show us how to get the job done right, let's watch our experienced Bel Verde artificial grass installers prepare and then build a small artificial grass lawn in this patio backyard. We'll start by measuring the area. Check the width and the depth and compare that with your project plan. The project we're showing here is small enough to only require one piece of turf. Well, what if it was larger? Let's see how we would measure and create a project with multiple pieces of grass. When measuring and building a project, it's important to take notice of both width and depth of the area. Bel Verde artificial grass comes in rolls that are 15 feet wide. Measure the width and mark to the end of the first 15 foot area. Then take a measurement to determine the length needed. In this case, the first piece is 15 feet wide by 19 feet long. To complete our example, the second area is 12 feet wide by 17 feet long. We would order two pieces of grass, one 15 feet wide by 19 feet long, and the other 15 feet wide by 17 feet long. The total square feet of our example project is 489 square feet, though we need to order 540 square feet to accommodate the width of the roll. Even if your project has curves and areas that won't be covered with grass, always measure to provide enough material to cover the entire area. To prepare your project area, you'll remove all the sod and seeded lawn grasses, root systems and amended soils. Rent a dump trailer or a waste container to haul debris away. Using a flathead shovel, scrape down under sod lawn areas until you reach native compact soil. You can leave irrigation and lighting intact or simply cut and cap the main line and remove and cap sprinkler heads in the project area. If drains exist, you'll want to make sure that the head rests below the fabric layer of your project. Simply trim off part of the pipe and return the vented cap. Clean up after the site prep to remove organic materials from concrete and any loose bark or other elements that interfere with installation. Remeasure the width and depth of the prepped area. This can help you determine how much weed barrier fabric to cut and install as well. Roll out, measure and cut construction grade weed barrier fabric. Bring it into the project site, spread and stretch it over the project area, providing four to six inches of overlap on seams and outside of the area where you're going to be installing your base materials. Using jute staples or spikes, tack the fabrics down every six inches Inches, close to any hard edge. Bring in your first load of materials and dump towards the back corner farthest from where you enter the site. Bring in each and every other load and dump it to the side of the last pile. Using the back of a hard garden rake or a flat side of a landscape rake, smooth the first pile into the desired height and then feather in the next load until the entire area is covered and smooth to desired height and shape. Then lightly mist the area to make the surface slightly damp. Compact the main area using a water-filled landscape roller or, as we are doing here, a gas-powered vibrating plate compactor. Walk the compactor around the outside edge of the installation and slowly work your way into the inside center. Using a hand tamper, tamp around the entire outside edge, paying attention to areas along the hard edge, like patios and walkways. Notice that we folded the extra weed fabric over the newly installed and compacted base. The extra fabric folded over will help keep the edge of the project free of debris over time. Your artificial grass is shipped in rolls covered in protective wrap that needs to be removed. Unroll the grass on a flat, clean, and dry surface with the green blade side up. All artificial grass has a grain and that should be pointing towards the edge where you just started unrolling the grass. Often in shipping, the artificial grasses might become wrinkled or as they do here, the surface appears to have several buckles. Laying the grasses out flat in full sun will help relax the blades and backing, returning them to their original shape. If you'll be seaming multiple pieces of grass together, you'll want to prep the edge of the grasses first. Simply remove the extra fabric we call selvage on each edge of the turf by cutting off the first row of blades. It's easier to move the grass if you roll it back up on the shipping tube and carry it into the job site to lay the turf down. Remembering to lay the grass down with the grain pointing towards the patio for this project, make any adjustments by gently pulling the grass and give it a gentle tug to remove any wrinkles. There's never any need to stretch the grasses as you would carpet. The project we've been building uses a single piece of turf. Well, what if you needed to seam two or more pieces together for your project? Let's take a look at two different seaming options. You'll lay out the first piece of grass and then smooth it into place. Then lay down the second piece of grass and adjust them to fit the area. 
you'll want to look closely between the pieces and adjust the spacing to equal the space between the tufted rows of blades. For nailing a seam with seam spikes, roll the turf back at each edge and bring the seam fabric in, tack it in place using a seam spike, and then roll it out and cut the length as needed. Your first seam option is to use 6 inch seaming spikes, which you will want to add along the seam every 4 or so inches by tapping them in diagonally on either side. You can also use artificial grass seam glue instead of seaming spikes, applying the glue down the center of the seaming material and spreading it with a V-notch trowel, covering the seaming fabric end to end. Then, take one edge at a time and roll the edge over the seaming fabric and pat it down over the glue, and then fluff up the blades to check your seam. To make sure the edges of the seam won't curl up over time, add seam spikes to each end of the seam on both sides. Grass sections will need to be trimmed along hard edges, and the best way to begin is to lay out the grass section and smooth against any hard edge. Take a china marker or silver pen and use that to mark on the backing of the grass. Once you have cut a few inches along the edge of the turf, push it back against the edge to check it. Once cut, you will want to secure the edges using 6-inch seaming spikes all around the outer perimeter of the edge, about 6 inches apart. Before we begin to infill the grass, Take the infill rake and bloom the blades up. This will help the infill fall between the blades easier later. Infill is a granulated material used to fill area in between the blades, helping to weigh the materials down and hold the blades upright. Using a drop spreader, you'll apply the infill materials evenly across the surface. Don't overlap and walk slowly for best results. Rake the material into the surface blades using short, aggressive strokes with your infill rake or a stiff push broom. To clean up, use a leaf blower and clear off the project surfaces of stray blades and other items. And you could also rinse the surfaces with a light spray of water. Let's take a look at where we started and how it looks now. See how the customer has updated his yard with new bark, plants, irrigation, and lighting. Well, now you're done. Sit back and relax. Enjoy the extra time you now have thanks to your new, low-maintenance, Belverde Artificial Grass Lawn, exclusively at Sam's Club.